Good morning, everyone. My name is Nick Hanna. I'm the United States Attorney here in Los Angeles. I am joined up here today by uh, FBI Assistant Director Paul Delacourt from the LA Field Office, uh, Deputy District Attorney Warren uh, Cotto from the LA uh, County District Attorney's Office, uh, Chief Patrick Nelson from the LA County Sheriff's Department, and a number of other individuals who were involved in the investigation and prosecution of this case. We're here today to announce a major uh, indictment targeting online fraudsters and the money launderers who facilitate those scams. At some point, most Americans have been the targets of online fraud schemes. Who can forget the famous Nigerian prince scam in which the fraudster claims to have millions of dollars stuck in Nigeria and needs the victim to help get the money out of the country. Well, over the years, those fraud schemes have evolved and become much more complex and sophisticated. Nigerian fraud networks now target individuals and businesses alike through sophisticated B, uh, business email compromise scams, known as BEC scams, romance scams, and other online schemes. In the BEC scams, the fraudsters will of, often hack a company's email system, impersonate company personnel, and direct payments to bank accounts that funnel money back to the fraudsters in Nigeria. In the romance scam, victims think they are developing a dating relationship, when in fact they are just being tricked into sending money to the fraudsters. Today we are taking a major step to disrupt these criminal networks. This morning, FBI agents, along with other federal and state law enforcement authorities, arrested a total of 14 defendants across the United States who are named in a sweeping fraud and money laundering case. Those arrested today, including 11 in the Los Angeles area, are among 80 defendants charged in a federal grand jury indictment that alleges millions of dollars were taken from victims through a variety of BEC scams, romance scams, and other online frauds. We believe this is one of the largest cases of its kind in U.S. history. As described in the 145-page indictment, and the 135-page criminal complaint, which was unsealed this morning, BEC scammers used hacked email accounts to convince businesses or individuals to make payments that were either completely bogus or that uh, should have been otherwise paid to legitimate companies. BEC scams, which include escrow scams, where hackers convince real estate purchasers to send down payments to bank accounts that they control are having a significant economic toll on businesses across the country and ruin the lives of individuals. Romance scams prey on those seeking friendships and relationships, often, often duping the victims to make repeated and ever escalating payments to the fraudsters they come to trust. In some cases, the victims in this case thought they were communicating with U.S. servicemen stationed overseas, when in fact they were emailing with con men. Some of the victims in this case lost hundreds of thousands of dollars in this way. And some of the victims of the romance scams and other online frauds were targeted specifically because they were elderly or otherwise vulnerable. In a few minutes, Assistant Director Delacourt will discuss these schemes and how to protect yourselves from online predators. I'll focus on the indictment that led to the arrests this morning. The indictment alleges 252 counts some of which deal with specific fraud schemes that targeted businesses, others that targeted individuals on dating and social media platforms, and others that targeted the elderly. The common thread is that all of these schemes involve the Internet to defraud victims. The indictment makes very specific allegations against these con artists, many of whom are based in Nigeria, intent on stealing money from victims. But just as important, the indictment also focuses on those responsible for enabling these fraud schemes. At the center of the indictment are operatives here in Los Angeles who facilitated the fraud schemes by opening U.S. bank accounts where victims were directed to deposit their money. And then these Los Angeles-based defendants laundered the stolen funds, delivering them to the scammers in Nigeria. The indictment and the criminal complaint expose in painstaking detail the techniques used by the scammers and their money men to fleece their victims, funnel funds through U.S. bank accounts, 
and pocket the proceeds. This case is a testament to the hard work and diligence of American law enforcement. The FBI agents involved in this investigation tracked down these scammers around the world. They identified dozens of victims from around the United States and from countries around the globe. Victims in Colombia, China, the Caribbean, Germany, Japan, Mexico, the United Arab Emirates, and the United Kingdom. The agents tracked down details of thousands of communications and thousands of financial transactions that were used to expose this far-flung conspiracy. The indictment outlined schemes against more than 30 victims, about half of which are businesses and law firms, mainly operating in the U.S. There are more than 10 individual victims, including eight who are older Americans, who were targeted in romance scams and other get-rich-quick schemes. These schemes were part of a larger conspiracy in which some of the conspirators directly solicited the victims, while others coordinated and participated in laundering the stolen funds. The indictment alleges that the L.A.-based group of money launderers received at least $6 million in stolen money, and the overall conspiracy attempted to steal another $40 million. The two lead defendants charged in the indictment orchestrated the money laundering scheme for numerous fraudsters. These money launderers had access to fraudulent bank accounts, some of which had been opened by so-called money mules. In some cases, they would establish a new account for a specific scheme targeting a particular company. The money launderers routinely went as far as registering fictitious business names with L.A. County so they could open bank accounts in the fictitious business names to receive money from their schemes. Once the scammers convinced their victims to transfer money to one of the fraudulent bank accounts, the money was sometimes quickly withdrawn in cash or in cashier's checks. In other cases, the money was quickly transferred to other bank accounts controlled by members of the conspiracy who then attempted to withdraw the funds. Ultimately, these money launderers used illicit money exchangers to transfer other funds from their Nigerian bank accounts to Nigerian bank accounts directed by the money launderers. The money exchangers sent <coughs> millions of dollars to Nigeria simply by using smartphone banking applications for Nigerian banks to transfer the funds. All the defendants named in the indictment are charged in a conspiracy to defraud and a conspiracy to commit money laundering. All the defendants are also charged with, with uh, aggravated identity theft, and many of the defendants face substantive fraud and money laundering counts. If convicted, all of the defendants face potential decades in federal prison. This case is part of our ongoing efforts to protect Americans from fraudulent schemes and to bring to justice those who prey on Americans and American businesses. My office recently became part of the Justice Department's Transnational Elder Fraud Strike Force as one of only six U.S. Attorney's Office offices participating in the strike force, we are expanding our efforts to investigate foreign-based fraud schemes that target American seniors through telemarketing and other scams. While the investigation that led to today's arrest started before the establishment of the task force, it clearly demonstrates our commitment to protecting older Americans, indeed protecting all Americans, from financial exploitation. With additional resources coming into the area as a result of the strike force, I expect to bring more and more cases of this type. Thank you very much. At this time, I would like to introduce Assistant Director in Charge, Paul Delacourt. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning. My name is Paul Delacourt, the Assistant Director in Charge of the FBI's Los Angeles Field Office. As part of the 252-count indictment described by the U.S. Attorney, FBI agents arrested 11 federal defendants in Los Angeles and another three around the country today. In total, some 80 defendants were charged, including many internationally. In the days ahead, we will be working with our foreign counterparts in nine countries to apprehend 57 additional defendants. A majority of the local arrests were made early this morning but one additional defendant was arrested on Sunday as he attempted to leave the country, and another was arrested last night. Two were previously in custody on other unrelated charges. Three subjects have also been arrested on state charges, and Deputy District Attorney Warren Cato will describe those shortly. We're looking for two fugitives 
here in Los Angeles and another four nationally, and we'll have that information available for you at the end of the press conference. Now, this investigation began in 2016 with a single bank account used to receive funds stolen through a business email compromise scheme. The case evolved into a complex, sophisticated, extensive conspiracy involving various types of cyber fraud through business email compromise, known most often as BEC, through traditional romance schemes that have migrated online and included the laundering of the proceeds of those frauds. Losses in this case were approximately $10 million, and attempted thefts were approximately $40 million. This case involved 32 confirmed victims. Victims were located in the United States, as well as in Japan, the UK, Lebanon, Ukraine, China, Mexico, Germany, Indonesia, UAE, and Trinidad and Tobago. This shows the extensive reach of the cyber criminals involved in these types of schemes. And while we're here to announce the results of this investigation, I'd like to describe the impact these fraud schemes are increasingly having on Americans here and around the country.